Hello everyone, welcome back to Stormworks Build and Rescue, and welcome back to Holt Harbour. So, we're in Holt Harbour today because we're going to be doing a video on how to make environmental mods like this one. So, this isn't in the standard base game obviously, this has been built by me and then added into the added into the game through add-ons. Um, and then it basically gives you the opportunity to use this harbour alongside your game which is good because you don't really get many nice harbours in the base game now of course you're not just re restricted to harbours you can also do uh, bases and i think there's some sort of um career outpost uh find this one on the workshop so it's got like a helipad and big sort of base and then i think you can go down like an elevator yeah and it brings you down into this massive underground layer which is pretty good so there's plenty of different things that you can add that you would never ever see in the base game like this obviously this is just pretty mental um if you were to see this in the base game but yeah gives you the opportunity to use it so where do we start for an environmental mod well obviously you're going to need to build something so you'll come into your workbench and you can construct whatever you want to uh, place in the world so i've already got this one built um this is going to be a pontoon that we're just going to add to a random island and basically because of the way the environmental mods work we will be putting it as a static object which we'll go into more detail in, in a minute so it comes in two parts so you've got the each individual pontoon of the of the dock and then you've got the the actual main dock itself which will be the static object that they will attach onto so these two items then will work together and you'll place these in the game to uh, make the mod so unfortunately for this bit I'm gonna have to have the taskbar along the bottom just because um, OBS records it a bit differently when you're doing the add-on editor. Basically what we do to get into the add-on editor, press escape, go to add-on editor and then we've got a fresh fresh uh, slate. So we're gonna name this one add-on test and this will be what comes up when you are loading it from your menu of saved add-ons. So you can either do environmental mo environment mods or mission locations. Personally, I don't really know the difference between them. If I'm doing something as a permanent environmental mod, I would do it as an environment in the environment mod section. Um, but if I was doing something as more of like a temporary thing, I would do it in the mission locations. Don't actually know what the difference is between the two. Could just be where they're sorted out if you're doing more advanced missions where you're using Lua and stuff. But for the most part, these can kind of work the same way, but we'll use environmental mods today. Then we're just going to go down, find a suitable island. I think we'll do we'll do this one. Give it a go. So we've got the island then, and then we just pick a spot where we want to put our uh, put our pier. So I think this little cove in here could be a good spot. Then we go into the row along the bottom here. You'll see all the different options, and we'll go into add vehicle. And then we will look up our lighthouse pontoon. It's named lighthouse pontoon because that was what it was originally built for. Um, so it's just how I would I'm navigating to get it. And then we can move this about on all these axes and then move it up, down, left, right, and get it into the into the position we want. So we're going to spin it so that it's at a bit of a better angle for where we want to go and then we will lower it right down onto the ground so it actually should line up quite nicely and then we can go over here to our options so we want this bit to be static because this is the, the base that the rest of it's going to obviously this depends on what you're putting in so whether or not it's static uh, you can put in keep vehicle active basically what that'll do is as soon as you enable the add one that'll spawn it in and even if you then go hundreds and hundreds of kilometers away it'll still remain active in the game it does sort of um use more resources while you're playing the game if you're not using it but it means that you won't have a sort of buffer when you come near it like if you come within maybe two two kilometers of it and it has to load it in if you're going back and forward and it has to load it in every time then it could be a bit annoying so it could just be easier to keep it static or keep it active so i think we're going to do that is editable means that you can take it back to a workshop we're not going to do that show on map means that it will show it up as a location on the map which makes it easier to find so we'll put that on just so that we can kind of show what it is um transponder active is um if it has a transponder on it then you can enable it and it will basically emit a signal so that you can find it we're going to keep that off um is vulnerable i have a feeling that's something to do with the update i'm not really 
overly sure on that one, but it doesn't really matter for making um, simply just uh, an environmental mod. So we'll then line up our other piece. Now what we can do here is take these um, these bits of data here and use them to configure this one. So the main one is the 96. That's where we want our that's the angle that we want our thing to be at. So if we rotate that round, we'll see it's going up. And then if we can get that onto 96, then we know that they're going to be exactly in line. There we go, 96. And then it's just a case of maneuvering this into place. Just sometimes trickier said than done. Especially for stuff like this where stuff needs to line up fairly precisely to work. Uh, with the grippers especially. But that looks like it's doing a good enough job. There will be a little bit of playing it, so if you have it sort of a little bit over it should kind of glitch itself back into position and work well enough. Now because this bit is a floating section of the dock, we're going to leave it as non-static. So it'll uh, it'll move up and down freely then, and it can rock about in the waves and stuff like that. So, pretty much that's us done. This is obviously a fairly simple one. We can go a bit more advanced. You can add in a few characters. So if we pop in a few random NPCs... You can also add in objects, so like if we wanted to have some trolleys for some reason, um, you can set that there, I'm not sure what that's going to do us. Um, obviously you can add in more vehicles, so let's say if we wanted to add in this vehicle here and then that way we can park something up against the pier when we're done. Um, and then you've got add floor, that will basically just set up floor change the color and then you can change whether it's lit or not so sometimes it will not be not be lit as standard and then it'll light at a certain time if you have it set up through Leo. I'm going to delete that so that it doesn't ruin our graphics. You can also add a fire if you have fires as part of your thing. This would be more for missions than it would be for making like a harbor or making an environmental mod of any kind but yeah you can change the size of the fire, change how explosive it is. Fires are pretty fun. You can also add loot so we'll just add a wee loot box in there to give us something to Get when we arrive, and you can then add animals. We'll add, we'll add a few seals around the place. A couple of cute little seals. I wish they had more of these away from the Arctic because, like, seals aren't just in the Arctic in real life. Then you've got ice, so if you want to navigate some icebergs, and then a graph node, which is for AI and Lua and that kind of stuff. Same with the zones, the zones are basically more for missions than they would be for the actual environmental modes so basically this is all you need for environmental modes the missions will be a bit bit more tricky now that everything we need is in place we will come back over to the add-on the add-on editor and then we can get an overview of everything that's going on now you can have multiple parts um to the add-on so if you were to go and choose another island you can add other stuff there so if you were using like a ferry route or something you could have it go from one island to another and you would have the the add-on take over both places but we'll not do that today what we need to do next then is save the add-on so we're just going to give this the same name add-on add-on add -on test and this will be what it will come up as in our saved list so you can name this something different to the save and that name will be what will come up when you actually go to select it out of the um, the list of add-ons and now it will be in our saved Saved add-ons. Now you can also then upload it to the workshop if you want to. So you can just press it and it's the same as uploading a workshop vehicle. Um, but just with an add-on instead. But we'll not do that today. So now that we're on our island, how do we get the environmental mod spawned in? So there's a couple of different ways to do this. If you're just wanting to use this once, one at a time, um, then you can go back into your add-on editor and you can use the test location feature so basically we press that button and that will spawn in all the different stuff like we've got our seals down here don't look to be too healthy our table our npcs and then our environmental um dock so the dock itself then because we put it on static it'll stay pl in place but the different jetties will then bounce up and down because they're not static same with the boat it's on the static so it'll float about and same with the ice as well now the only problem with this is that you can only do one location at a time so if we had the two locations you would only be able to use one of them at a time which is a bit tricky when you're sort of trying to figure stuff out and uh, work between the two 
So the better way to do it is to come out of your game now that it's saved and go back to the main menu and start a fresh one. From your home screen, you'll go into new game. We're going to start this one in custom mode. And then you'll go into enabled add-ons. Now you've got all your different add-ons. This is all the base game ones. So like your missions, your AI, your fuel, tanks, your everything basically. Your containers, all that kind of stuff. Then we have our workshop and our save tab. Now we are going to be looking in the save tab for ours. So ours is add-on test. We'll basically come over and enable that. You can also search if it's something a bit more. Um, if you've got loads and loads of missions or... Um, Still, like if you've if you've loads of them and you've different names for them, then the um it's easier to search through them. Same with the workshop. If you know the name of something in the workshop, so if I look up my uh, Holt Harbor, it'll come up in the workshop, and you'll notice this is using the um name that we give it in the first page, not the saved name. So the saved name will be just what we save it as, but the actual add-on name itself will be what comes up in the list. So once that's enabled. We can go to confirm and create the game. So we're loaded into our new save game. We've got all the, the add-ons that we didn't have in the last one. Because my last one was set up for purely testing ships. So I don't have all these different add-ons enabled. But we can also see the vehicle coming up where it is on the little island. So if we right click and we'll teleport over here. And then we should be able to see it all in action working well. There we go. Lovely. Get the weather turned down a bit. So, yeah, we can see we've got all this in here. It all works well, it's all nice, and if we had multiple uh, missions, it would allow us then that we can use this mission alongside other missions, which is really nice because then you can, or alongside other locations, sorry, which is nice then because you can have it reaching across the different tiles of the game. So, an example of where we would do that is with my Holt Harbor one. So... In this one I have nine or seven um, different missions. You've got the main harbour and then because of the channel markers that go all the way up, they go all the way and then you'll see them following the whole course of the river up. So you can see them coming through the bridge and then it just goes all the way up. So basically then at the end you get an add-on that links all of these together and can cover an area of a couple of kilometres, which is uh, pretty cool when you're doing RP and stuff like that. If you want to make a really sort of advanced add-on where you can have loads and different stuff dotted about the place which is pretty cool so hopefully that video was nice and informative and you were able to learn how to make the add-ons obviously quite a basic video but it's the basics of what you need to do to to get some of these um add-ons built up and they are a really really cool way to sort of expand on the base game because obviously with the way the game was made originally a lot of stuff that people have ended up building was way out of the out of bounds of what the the devs kind of expected when they were making it originally so the docks aren't really suitable or like there's certain things that just don't look as good as they could and it's really cool to be able to then modify them with this kind of stuff and really get a, a nice gameplay um, experience from it so yeah hopefully you've enjoyed the video um, if you'd like to see more sort of tutorials and stuff let me know and let me know on the, what kind of topics and um, stuff that you'd like to see I was thinking of possibly doing one on making nav lights. I know there's a few of them out, out there, but they can be a bit hard to understand. So just doing the basic nav lights of the of the boats to try and get them, try and get your creations a bit more like realistic. Because for some of the people that really want to get realism, that's the one thing letting down a lot of boats is their their nav lights. So yeah, hopefully you've enjoyed the um, video. Let me know what you think, and until um, the next one, see you later. Happy sailing. Bye-bye.